KRCG 13's Kaylee Peterson joins us again in St. Louis. She's with a St. Louis University law professor to talk to us about why this questionnaire is unusual. Thanks, Megan. I'm joined by St. Louis University law professor John Ammon, and we're going to talk about this questionnaire that's regarding the publicity that jur potential jurors are filling out. How rare in a case is it for jurors to be filling out this questionnaire? It's very rare. This uh, first questionnaire is only about publicity. What have you seen? What have you read? And uh, other questions like did those things that you saw, things that you read, did those things uh, lead you to form an opinion about the governor or about the case? So this is very unusual to have that kind of questionnaire. Uh, this is an initial stage in the process before they get to the real jury selection, which will be on Monday. And we know that they're trying to get 60 potential jurors to go to that next round of questioning, but they've so far only seated eight potential jurors and they've stricken a lot more. How rare is that? It's very rare to have more potential jurors stricken than accepted. And in this case, more than half have been stricken, as you noted. Um, and it's really surprising. Uh, now, to their credit, the jurors are being very frank. But it's surprising at the number of people who've said, I formed an opinion about it, I think he's guilty, or people who have said that uh, I've read enough and I know enough that I may have an opinion one way or other, either about the case or about the governor himself. So I think it's been very surprising, the number of strikes for cause of people have indicated that, well, I think I might be able to be fair, but I've seen a lot and I may have an opinion already, which means they can't serve. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us and providing a little bit more insight, uh, insight on that questionnaire. But for now, we'll head back to the studio reporting live in St. Louis. Kaylee Peterson, KRCG 13. One of jury selection to hear the invasion of privacy case still underway at this hour. KRCG 13's Kaylee Peterson has been in the courtroom all day. She joins us outside now to tell us what the legal teams there are looking for. Kermit, Megan, the jury selection is still underway at this hour. We know they're running a little bit behind. They wanted to question 80 jurors today. Their goal now, 40. Part of the reason it's taking so long is they had potential jurors fill out a questionnaire asking them about any media bias that they've seen or uh, how familiar they are with the case. And we do know that they are looking to fill 60 more seats on Monday for potential jurors to go through another round of questioning. And so far, they've found only eight potential jurors to make it to that second round. We do know that that is pretty rare. I talked to a St. Louis University law professor who said it's moving slow and it's very rare to have this type of questionnaire underway. But we do know Governor Greitens is in the courtroom today and he walked in smiling with his defense team and he's made eye contact with every potential juror. And like I said, jury selection is expected to continue tomorrow and through Monday. Reporting live in St. Louis, Kaylee Peterson, KRCG 13. KRCG 13's Kaylee Peterson is standing by with a St. Louis University law professor about why this questionnaire is unusual. Megan Kermit, we know day one of jury selection is expected to wrap up here in the next couple minutes. But right now, I'm joined by St. Louis University law professor John Ammon, and he has been in the courtroom all day listening to these potential jurors answer this questionnaire. How rare is it that we see this type of publicity questionnaire answered in the courtroom? Yeah, I've never, never seen it before. I've never seen a... Uh high profile case like this one. So it's unusual to have this separate questionnaire apart from the one that jurors normally get and that the lawyers get information about. So, um, and we have to remember too that this is just a questionnaire to make the panel for Monday that's a panel of 50 or 60 people to choose the jury from there. So this is a very preliminary step. Yes, and like you just mentioned, they want to have 60 potential jurors for Monday. Right now, they only have 12 that will be seated. Why is this process taking a lot longer than they thought it would? Well, Judge Burleson is giving a lot of latitude to the lawyers on both sides to ask a lot of questions. Um, they're asking people uh, what they saw in the media, who, whom they've talked to, do they have any opinions, and it's going to, uh, into a fair amount of detail. And a, a juror just this afternoon had a different issue. She talked about a personal experience that would prevent her from being a good juror. Uh, she didn't go into those details, but the parties, both sides, agreed to strike her. So there's reasons other than publicity that are people are being struck for today. You'll see more of that on Monday where people might be struck for other reasons. 
All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us, John. For now, we'll head back to the studio reporting live in St. Louis. Kaylee Peterson, KRCG 13. KRCG 13's Kaylee Peterson has been in the courtroom this morning and she will be there all day. She joins us now live from St. Louis. Well, Dick, we now have 21 of 60 potential jurors that will move forward to the next round of questioning. Again, there's 60 potential jurors that they want to have for that next round, and we're only on 21. So the judge has pushed back that second day of or that second round of questioning from Monday to Tuesday now, since we only have 21. Now he's asking all the potential jurors that are being sent home for the weekend and are returning to stay away from any media and to excuse themselves from any conversation conversations involving the case. We'll bring you more updates from the courtroom later at five. Reporting live in St. Louis, Kelly Peterson, KRCG 13. In our continuing coverage, it's day two of jury selection in Governor Eric Greiden's criminal felony of invasion or invasion of privacy trial. KRCG 13's Kaylee Peterson has been following this from the very beginning. She joins us live in St. Louis with information on where where the jury selection process is. Well, Megan, jury selection for day two is still underway. I just stepped out of the courtroom. We're not allowed to have cameras in there, but this jury selection is taking much longer than anticipated. Originally, we were supposed to have 60 potential jurors moving forward to Monday for a second round of questioning. However, that second round of questioning has been pushed back to Tuesday. We now have 27 potential jurors that will be seated for that second round of questioning and uh, jurors are still in that first phase where they're getting through the hardship part and they're also answering a questionnaire about publicity and any information they might know about the case ahead of time. Now the judge has asked both the defense and the state to move that process along as they start those questionnaires and we through those people to end up with those 60 potential jurors for that second phase of questioning, which will begin on Tuesday. Reporting live in St. Louis, Kaylee Peterson, KRCG 13. KRCG 13's Kaylee Peterson has spent another long day in the courtroom. She joins us live from St. Louis to tell us where things stand. Megan and Kermit, day two of jury selection is still underway at this time. That process is moving a lot slower than anticipated. Originally, they planned to have 60 potential jurors by the end of today, moving towards Monday. However, of those 60 seats that they were anticipating filling, they've only filled 27. Now, the judge is asking both the state and the defense to speed up that process in the questioning. They're questioning them on a answer, fill in the blank answer they filled out about the publicity that they may have seen surrounding the case will continue to follow this jury selection as it continues on Monday. Reporting live in St. Louis, Kaylee Peterson, KRCG 13. We're continuing coverage this morning as Governor Eric Greitens is due back in court in St. Louis for his criminal invasion of privacy case. KRCG 13's Kaylee Peterson joins us live outside the courthouse to tell us what we can expect from day three of jury selection. Kaylee? Dick and Katie, good morning. Day three of jury selection in Governor Eric Greitens' criminal invasion of privacy case is scheduled to begin at 9 a.m. Now, this is day three, but we're still in the first phase of questioning for jury selection. They're running a bit behind. Now, we know that the state and the defense are looking to move 60 potential jurors on to a second round of questioning. However, they only have about half of those potential jurors. Now, in this phase, potential jurors are answering questions about hardships that may uh, conflict with them serving on the jury and they're also answering a questionnaire about publicity and what prior knowledge they have about this case. The next phase will include more intense questioning before they move to the trial. We know that the judge is frustrated with how slow the jury selection process is moving. He's asked both the state and the defense to move that process along a little bit faster. Now Governor Greitens has been in court uh, for jury selection. He's been making it a point to look every single potential juror straight in the eye. Reporting live in St. Louis, Kaylee Peterson, KRCG 13. Well, we're continuing coverage this morning as Governor Eric Greitens is due back in court in St. Louis for his criminal invasion of privacy case. KRCG 13's Kaylee Peterson joins us live outside the courthouse to tell us what we can expect from day three of jury selection. 
Dick and Katie, good morning. Day three of jury selection in Governor Eric Ryan's criminal invasion of privacy case is expected to begin at 9 a.m. today. Now, jury selection is running behind. It's frustrating the judge. He's asked both the state and the defense to move that process along. They're looking to move 60 potential jurors on to a second round of questioning. They have about half of that. Now, we do know that this round of jury selection, the judge is asking potential jurors about any hardship that might prevent them from serving on the uh, on the trial. And then also they're talking about publicity, what knowledge they may already have about the case going into this. Governor Grimes has been in court and he's made it a point to make sure he's made eye contact with every single potential juror. Reporting live in St. Louis, Kaylee Peterson, KRCG 13. We're continuing coverage this morning as Governor Eric Greitens' felony invasion of privacy case has been dismissed. KRCG 13's Kaylee Peterson has been in the courtroom since the start of jury selection. She joins us live now to tell us what's next for the governor. Good morning, Dick and Katie. Governor Eric Greitens says the dismissal of his felony invasion of privacy case is a great moral victory and that it's been a long time coming. He also says he's emerged a changed man and apologizes to his family and the state of Missouri. Now, the St. Louis Circuit Attorney Kim Gardner is asking for a special prosecutor to be assigned to this case. Uh, the Greitens defense lawyers say there's 27 days for charges to be refiled. Now, Kim Gardner released a statement saying in part Judge Rex Burleson made an unprecedented decision by allowing the defense to endorse her as a witness. She says this places her in an impossible position of being a witness, allowing her to be cross-examined by her own subordinates. The defense also says the computer tampering charge should be dropped because of Gardner's behavior. The hearing for that case is scheduled for May 22nd. Reporting live in St. Louis, Kaylee Peter in KRCG 13. This morning is Governor Eric Greitens invasion of privacy case has been dropped. The St. Louis Circuit Attorney is asking for a special prosecutor to be assigned. KRCG 13's Kaylee Peterson joins us live in St. Louis with a law professor to tell us why new charges might not be refiled. Good morning, Dick and Katie. This morning I'm joined by St. Louis University law professor John Ammon. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Sure. So what was unique about this case dismissal? Well, uh, the unique part was the threat that the circuit attorney herself, Kim Gardner, would be called as a witness by the defense. And that's been brewing for a while. Um, and what the state did is use that as an excuse to dismiss the case. Now, they did not have to dismiss it because of that, because other lawyers in her office could have prosecuted the case even if she was serving as a witness. So it really is, was a misdirection in some ways to blame the dismissal on Kim Gardner being a witness. They could have proceeded using other attorneys. And we know Kim Gardner is asking for a special prosecutor to be assigned to this. How likely is it that another prosecutor will take this up? Well, a judge will look at that. Um, I think the reason she's doing that is political, at least in part, uh, that she wants the heat off of her. Uh, she's already been thre threatened with sanctions by Judge Burleson in this case. So to avoid those problems, she wants somebody else to prosecute it. Now, if a prosecutor is appointed, a special prosecutor, it, it will be a prosecutor from a different county, uh, probably not from the immediate St. Louis area, probably from outstate somewhere. It could be Kansas City. Uh, but what would happen then is that prosecutor will look at the case and he or she could decide not to go forward with it. Just because a special prosecutor is appointed doesn't mean he or she will bring the case to trial. Uh, they will take an independent look at it. So uh, we're a long way from knowing what happens next. Uh, they have 27 days to refile as we calculated. Um, and uh, I think they'll know whether a special prosecutor will want to go ahead with that or not. And why might new charges not be filed in this invasion of privacy case? Well, one possibility is that the circuit attorney politically, uh, to, for some cover, will say, well, we also have the second felony. We have the computer tampering involving the, uh, the donor list for Mission Continues. We're going to put our resources into that case, so we're not going to refile the uh, invasion of privacy. We're not going to uh, spend any more time on that. We're going to put all our resources into the other felony. That you, you could watch for that. That might be what they do because that case is still pending. That case hasn't been dis dismissed. That case doesn't involve 
a victim who alleges that there were sexual things going on. So it doesn't have those privacy issues. It's a, it's a much cleaner case from that standpoint. All right, well, thank you so much for joining us. We're continuing coverage of the special house committee investigating Governor Eric Greitens just wrapped up a hearing with the lawyers representing the office of the governor. KRCG 13's Kaylee Peterson joins us live now from the Capitol to tell us why lawyers say that hearing was a step in the right direction. Well, Dick Edward Grime and Ross Garber are the lawyers representing the office of the governor. This means they're representing the governor in official capacity, not a personal way. And this also means that the state of Missouri is footing their bill. Grime and Garber met with the committee to discuss what potential impeachment proceedings would look like. Grime says he's hopeful after Barnes says he believes they will agree on many of those rules proposed. Grime and Garber say all witnesses should be available for cross-examination. Garber says impeachment is reserved for the most grave conduct of a government official and the process towards that impeachment should be fair. And the focus now is on making sure that the process is as fair as it can be. Because uh, remember, what we're talking about is potentially throwing out an election, throwing out over a million votes. And so before we do that, uh, before we even contemplate doing that, before we even contemplate nullifying an election, we have to make sure that the process is one that is fair that, and that it's open so that the public has confidence in the results. Garber says any testimony, including that of Gre Governor Greitens' former mistress, should make, be made public if it would be used uh, and considered for the impeachment process. Barnes says the committee is begging for Greitens to appear and testify before them. Both the lawyers say that the decision about whether or not Greitens would testify would not be theirs, but that of their his personal lawyers. Reporting live in Jefferson City, Kaylee Peterson, KRCG 13. KRCG 13's Kaylee Peterson. Peterson brings us up to date once again at the Capitol. Dick, the special house committee investigating Governor Eric Greitens met with the lawyers representing the office of the governor. This means they represent Greitens in an official capacity, not personal capacity. The lawyers in the committee discussed how the potential impeachment proceedings would look. The lawyers want it to be open to the public and there to be an opportunity for cross-examination. Now, the lawyers say that it's not up to them if Greitens testifies before the committee. It's up to his personal lawyers. Reporting live in Jefferson City, Kaylee Peterson, KRCG 13.